Hey, what's going on guys? It's not too often I get to say we're taking a look at a 148 scale, but here it is today, the uh, full mechanics version of the Melee's Kenbu. Now you'll notice that this one has some clear armor on it because this is the first run exclusive version that comes with some clear armor parts, so that's really cool. But the kit is packed with detail, gimmicks, weapons, and all that good stuff. We'll take a look at everything in today's review. Let's go ahead and get into it. So right off the bat with this box art, you'll notice you got a very sharp, snazzy looking design. The box art looks very cool. And taking a look at it more closely, you can see all of that detail there. And you'll notice that this is the special bonus for the first run limited edition that inclu includes clear armor parts. So that's what you're seeing there, those clear armor parts that are even illustrated into the box art there on the front amongst all that cool detail and everything. That's gonna be something that you're only gonna be getting with the first run release of the kit. If we take a look at the side of the box, you can see how the bottom half of the box is kind of extended and is in red. That's another thing that's just pointing out the fact that this is the first run exclusive version of this. On the back side of the box, we've got some artwork here, which I imagine will probably not be featured. Normally the bottom of the box, you know, doesn't have any artwork either on the sides or on the bottom, unless it's an RG. So the normal version, probably we won't have any of this, but you've got some more stuff added on the lower half of the box there. On the side of the box, we got some more information about the gimmicks. You got the opening hatch there with our pilot figures that are included. Some details about some of the articulation of the kit there. It looks like we're gonna have some metallic stickers in red and green for activated and power exceeded modes that'll go around different parts of the armor and the frame there. That all looks very cool. Just some more details of the frame. Here's the front and rear view. So that's showing what the kit is gonna look like all fully built up and painted and everything. Going on to the other side of the box, we can see some of the included weapons that are, you got with this. So you got the 60 millimeter rifle, you got the sword, and you've got the claw weapon, which on the HG kit, that was included as a weapon that you could get with the armored carrier. And here's a look at the size comparison. This one being 148 scale compared to the 178 scale HG. So it's obviously it's going to be bigger. And with that, let's go ahead and crack into it. So right off the bat, as I would expect, there's our clear parts right on top. So we'll take a look at those, of course, in the review. Everything else looking pretty cool. I can see just by the size of some of these parts, just how big this kit is gonna be. And I think it's gonna be even bigger than I expected. So we do have an additional paper in here, just talking about the use of the clear parts. I guess we're not actually going to use all of them on there, but it does show you at least the parts list there and just a black and white image of what the kit should look like with those clear parts added on. The actual instruction manual shows the full normal color version of the box art so I'm guessing this is what the normal box art will look like not the clear color version of it so it's just the same just those parts are just solid color on the back side of the manual we've got some information about the Kenbu and an illustration there also about the pilot and the AI some more photographs and information about some of the weapons and gimmicks here listed on the back and it's all in Japanese and in English so if you want to just read these little bits of information there Got some stuff to read that you can give you some more information about that. On the front inside pages here, we've got even more meticulously calculated mechanical design born from industrial design. So once again, just some more information about everything there in Japanese and in English, if you wanna check some of that out. Let's continue here on to the next page and there's some cool detailed images of the kit, of the cockpit and everything. On the next page is our parts list. And then from there, it just gets on with the construction of the kit. So just flipping through that, seems like there's not really too much else to see. At the end here, just kind of goes over a few of the gimmicks, it looks like, how to use the weapons and everything. On our last page, it will show us how to fold up the mecha for when it's transformed into its parked state. And then we got the marking location here and also our painting guide down here in Japanese and in English. But all right, so here is the look at the included marking decals that you have. There's a lot of them. So a lot of little markings in white, gray, red, orange, yellow, all over the place. And here are the metallic stickers, which look very similar to like what was included with the Perfect Grade Unleashed RX-782 Gundam, if you guys have built that. They're in a kind of like very thick material here. So those will look nice when they're on the kit. And for our first run exclusive clear runner, it's actually runner F. So we've actually got our pilot figures on there in clear. These are gonna be clear parts for around on a few different areas of the kit, the external armor obviously, so that you can show off the internal frame of the kit. So those would be cool. The runner A here is in four colors, clear, bluish green up there at the top, red, 
some molded gold down there for uh, probably the, our piston details in the front of the chest, and then our internal frame is going to be in this dark, slightly brownish, dark gray color. Burner B is just going to be some more inner frame parts there mostly, and we've got two of this B runner. That's going to continue on to runners C1 and C2 here, including there's our piece for the sword. These runners are attached together, you can just pop those apart. And the same thing here for runners D1 and D2, more parts on there in that dark gray. These runners will also come apart, you can see there's parts for the rifle on there which does look very detailed. Runner E1 is some parts here in white, and then runner E2 is a copy of this section of the runner right there. And here's the normal color version of the F runner which is just all in white, but for this version of course we also have this runner in clear. Runners G1 and G2 are going to be some parts in a light gray color. And lastly, runner H1 and H2 are going to be in this slightly orangish yellow color for our yellow accents, and that's it. Alright guys, so here is the kit all built up, and I gotta say it's larger than I expected, which is very cool. It's always nice to have a really big, good-sized model kit. And of course it's packed with detail, and as you guys can see, what I decided to do for showing off the clear parts of this first run limited exclusive version, uh, I went for half clear, half it was just normal, so you guys can see like what the kit would look like with just all of the normal armor parts. You can see what the clear parts do as far as showing the internal details now without doing any like painting on the frame parts or any sort of like a dry brush or anything to bring out the details of the frame parts. The details underneath the clear parts aren't really all that visible, but let's go ahead and take a look at all the weapons and accessories that we have included with the kit. First of all, you will see that I did put some of the stickers on, but there are a lot of marking stickers for this kit, so if you guys want to use those, that is one way to add even more detail on to the kit, just by using the stickers. Now the stickers on like the white areas and the gray areas, those are pretty good, but the stickers on any of the darker colors, the red, or especially like on the frame parts, aren't going to be looking really all that great. There is also those stickers for the power lamps, which I have not put on yet, because again, I'll just save those for once the kit is actually painted, because those, once you use them, can't really reuse them and those are really nice those will add some really nice detail onto here as well just that go around near the joints where you'll add those power lamp stickers but taking a look at the hands there you got a lot of really nice detail on there and how those are going to work is basically you swap the back part of the hand like so so you've got the options for open hands these are your holding hands for the sword and then you also have a set of holding hands with the trigger finger extended for holding onto the rifle unfortunately no closed fists included with this set for its main weapons, here is the rifle, which is quite large and again very detailed, so you just got lots of detail all around on this, including a little tab there in the hand so that it will plug on, on the handle, so that it will plug into the hand very nice and securely. We've also got our sword, which is simple, but it's made up of just a couple pieces there. Again, really nice big size to this, and even a little bit of color separation with that little white bit there at the end. And these can both be attached onto the backpack, which just plugs right onto the back of the torso. And you've got some articulation here with these parts being able to move out like so. You can swap out this section of the arm for the superheated vibrating combat claws right here, which are very cool in their size and shape. It's nice compared to like the HG version. These are much larger and so they're able to make them look a little bit more sharp so they look just I think just better in this version than in the HD version. The only problem is that there's no sticker or anything. It would have been nice, I mean obviously a clear part would have been cool or something, but at the very least have a sticker to put on there to make that look like metallic orange or something like that for when they're actually heated up. But unfortunately as it is, that's just all that you have with this, just the part itself. So if you wanted to have that look like it's heated, you're gonna have to paint that or something. We do also have the shield with short blade, which is part of the unfinished state for this. So for this one, you don't have to swap out the arm itself. You just have to pop off this little piece right here. And that just attaches onto the forearm like so. So that works really nice. And then for over here, for this shoulder, you just remove the armor pieces. And that shoulder is gonna look like that. So you have some kind of nice detail on there. And then you pop this little piece in here to complete the look. And it's just gonna look like that. Adds a nice little bit of kind of detail there onto the top basically. We'll go through all of the articulation here in a second, but just a couple of gimmicks of it is that this knee part does extend out like that. It just gives you a little bit of extension that's supposed to be for when it's kneeling, so that this knee armor is kind of extended out as just like a added like pressure cushion there for in a kneeling pose. And then up here, of course, the cockpit does open up as well. Let's move the head down and lift up the hatch there like that, and there's our pilot figure up inside there. And there is a lot of really nice detail down in there. But obviously it's not going to be all that noticeable unless like you really go in there and paint everything in. There's also this little bit which kind of folds down like that which is meant to go like in front of the pilot's face there. So when that closes you'll see like that goes there like that. 
This part up underneath the back skirt does also fold out like this for making like a platform. This is for the pilot to be able to get into the cockpit. And we have our little kneeling pilot figure which can sit on there like that. And I'm gonna try to balance this here for you guys. It doesn't really plug onto anything. So there's some really nice detail there on the platform, but there's nowhere for it to actually plug onto. But anyway, you can have it set up like that. So he's like kneeling, like getting into the Kenbu there. But just to get back to the rest of the articulation of the kit, number one, I mean, I just want to point out that the head design does look really nice. Just like with the HG kit, you have some really nice clear parts in here that catch the light really nicely, therefore the eyes. The head, I will say though, it looks a bit weird because the neck seems quite long. It's got a little bit of a chicken neck going on there, but this does have a couple of points of articulation so you can rotate it around at the base. This whole thing will move to the front like that. You can move it up, down, all around, every which direction. So it does look really nice as far as like pulling off different poses. You'll just have to kind of adjust it in a way so that it doesn't look kind of strange in some poses. I think it does look a bit weird with the neck being as long as it is. But just like with the HG, we've got a nice wide range of articulation. Again, a lot of this is like for it to be able to fold up into like its transportation mode. But you've got nice rotation, bending side to side, ab crunch there. The shoulder articulation forward moves that piston there in the chest, which in this case is an actual gold piece, which is nice compared to just the gold sticker on the HG. This little bit on the top of the chest, on top of the torso, will lift up when you want to move the arm up. But just like with the HG, moving the arm up, just the shoulder just kind of doesn't really allow it. There's not really room for it to move up any higher than that, unfortunately. But we've got rotation at the top of the arm, and then of course the two points of articulation in what is essentially our elbow joint there. The hand is on a ball joint, but then you also have a hinge there which will allow you to move that forward and back like so and then the thumb is just a single piece there on a ball joint without any skirting armor other than the back skirt which just moves up and down like so the legs are not going to be limited by anything so you can rotate them all the way forward back all the way out to the side no issues there you can also rotate them there at the top and then just like with the elbow we have a very interesting knee joint here which goes like that and then you also have a bend down here which is like the top of the ankle and then the foot rotates down here, which would be kind of like the bottom of the ankle in the foot. You have rotation there side to side. These ankle armor parts here on the side rotate around independently, so you can move those around kind of every which way to get those out of the way. And some nice color separation there for those two with that yellow part being inset inside there. This little red part here on the front of the foot is on a small little ball joint, so you can kind of move that around. The toe obviously is able to bend up and down like that, up underneath the feet, full detail there, of course, as you might expect. So once again, just like with the HG, a very, very, very nice range of articulation for this guy, so you'll be able to get it in any pose that you might want. And as you'll see up underneath the waist section, there is a place that you can plug this directly onto an action base. So that's nice about this too, how you don't need to use it, an adapter, it just plugs right onto the base itself. So for doing aerial poses or for using this with an action base, that makes it very convenient and good just because, like I said, it's a pretty large kit. Now to demonstrate the size, unfortunately I don't have the HG Kenbu here at the moment to be able to compare them side by side, but here it is with the Jogan, which is basically the same size. And then just for a comparison, here is a 144 scale Gundam, so you guys can get the idea. So similar like with the Master Grade, it's gonna be like the 100 scale version of like a 144 scale Gundam, but it definitely is quite large. So compared to like your standard Master Grade Gundam kit, it is going to even be big looking, you know, even compared to that. So I gotta say guys, very cool kit. Basically between this and the HG, they both offer some really cool weapons, some really great articulation, just a really interesting design. Of course, the advantage of this one is that it's just much larger, so they're able to put more detail into it. And the other nice thing about this too is that you get kind of more weapons and stuff included with the box, which with the HG you had to get from different sets. So it's kind of nice to basically have more stuff in the box with this. So if you hadn't built any version of the Kenbu yet and you were wanting to try out and you kind of weren't sure whether you wanted to get the full mechanic version or the HD version I would definitely go for this version just because there's just so much there you have more detail and more weapons and accessories compared to the HD version but you know if you are on a budget then the HD version is really nice as well but if you're willing to spend a little bit more for the full mechanics version I would definitely go for this version the clear parts as part of like the first limited first run limited edition of this I feel like aren't really that great to be honest I mean I guess if you wanted to show off some of that detail but you definitely would need to do some painting on the frame in order to really see some of the detail otherwise the clear parts are just basically a gimmick 
Ultimately, I probably won't end up using mine at all. I'll just swap them out for just the regular armor pieces once I get to painting this kit later on down the line. But let me know your guys' thoughts on the kit. Are you excited for it? Are you excited for more full mechanics kits coming out from the Kyokai Senki line? Maybe which ones in particular? I think probably the MAIM Ghost is one that I, I guess probably a lot of you guys would say that you would like to see a full mechanics version of. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And of course, if you're interested in checking out any of the kits from the Kyokai Senki series, we've got all of them there at USA Gundam Store. The link and a coupon code for you guys to use is all down there in the video description, so check that out. The kits are really different, and if you're looking for something different and unique to build, and with not that much new Gumpla coming out these days, I would highly recommend you guys to check out the line. So thank you all so much for checking out the video today. If you want to like the video, subscribe, comment, it's all greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.